I've now spent around 100 hours drawing Lego minifigures and I thought I'd distill everything I've learned into this one video. So let's get straight to it. Now my process of drawing Lego minifigures can be split into five steps. Getting the photo, doing the sketch, the marker base, fine liners and the colored pencils. And I'll put timestamps on the video so you can navigate it as you please. So let's start off with step number one, getting the photograph. Now if you want to draw realism, it's really important that you work from a photograph because your brain is kind of limited to what it can remember in terms of specific details of that thing. Pick something that you're genuinely interested in because you're going to be drawing it for a very long time if you want to make it look good. So let's say you're interested in Marvel. I wouldn't recommend drawing just a generic like gardener minifigure because you're going to get bored, rush it and it will look a bit pants. Mm -hmm. Instead say if you did like Marvel I would opt for something like Iron Man or Captain America like I did and yeah it's a much more enjoyable experience. But how do you take the photographs? Now I use my phone to do this as the camera on it is pretty good and I appreciate that lots of you have phones if you're watching this but the one thing I do use is a light box which I appreciate not a lot of you will have. So I'm going to show you how to do it without a light box and still produce some pretty cool images. So all you'll need is an A3 sketch pad, a desk lamp, the minifigure you want to draw and something to hold the minifigure like the minifigure little platforms you have or even blue tack. So you want to take a sheet of paper out of the pad and put it on a table. You then want to take the rest of the pad and put it into a 90 degree angle so it stands up on its own. You can now put the light at the front of this contraption and start modeling your figure and I would really recommend doing some dynamic poses as this will make the drawing look more eye-catching and impressive. But once you're happy with the composition and the lighting you you can then take your photograph and it should really pop as the background is all white. So now we move into phase two, the sketching. Now it's super important that you get a very accurate sketch when drawing Lego minifigures as the proportions need to be basically spot on, which is why I use the grid system opposed to doing it freehand because with freehanding, you're likely to make a lot of mistakes and this can very easily ruin the piece. Now I have a very in-depth video on how I do the grid system, which I'll leave down in the description for you to watch after this one, of course. But the basic premise is that I'll print out the image. I'll then split it into at least 64 even boxes. I can then put the exact same grid in terms of measurements onto my piece of paper I'll be working on and and then I can transfer what's on the reference photo to my piece of paper as it's been broken down into much more digestible chunks and there's a lot more reference points to make sure it's nice and accurate. And something very specific to Lego minifigures is that there are a lot of parallel lines and it's really important that you pick up on this. Now I forgot to mention the materials I use to do the sketch which are the 0.5mm Nick Pro mechanical pencil, the Mark Story eraser pencil which has really pinpoint erasability, just a larger eraser for the bigger mistakes and to get rid of most of the grid lines once I'm done and a kneadable eraser which I use to get rid of a lot of the excess graphite which can smudge at the end of the sketching process and also just to make sure that the sketch is nice and clean ready for the alcohol markers. Which brings me on to stage number three, the marker base. Now I do this using alcohol markers, more specifically Windsor and Newton Pro markers. But any alcohol marker will do the trick as long as they don't bleed anywhere, tear up the paper or just have really poor pigment. But on the topic of tearing the paper, I forgot to mention what paper I'm using. And I do most of my Lego minifigure drawings on Strathmore toned grey paper as it's able to withstand all of this alcohol marker ink without tearing and you'll see a bit later on that the lighter colours on top of this paper will have a lot more pop to them as they're a lot more contrasting in comparison to the colour of the page than they would be if the page was white. Now back to the marker base. I start by taking a very good look at my reference image and picking any colours that I see in that picture. And even if you don't end up using some of these markers, it's always better to have them out just in case. Now the first thing I do on this marker base is go in with a dark colour first to outline the really obvious dark sections and then use a bunch of intermediary tones or colours to blend it to the lighter areas. And a simple way to look at blending alcohol markers is to imagine you have two boxes, one with a lighter and one with a darker colour. You just need to go over the intersection with that lighter colour and boom, you have blended the colours together. I keep going over the figure, just really paying attention to that reference image, outlining where all the obvious dark and light sections are and kind of blending them together. I'm never too neat with this, as I can clean this up with stage four, the fine liners. Now I say fine liners, but I only ever really use one, the 0.3 millimeter Unipin fine liner, as it's able to go into all those really small intricate sections, and you're also able to just use it a bit more in the darker, bigger sections. Now this is the shortest stage out of the five, and is where I crisp up all the edges that the alcohol marker base may have mullered, making it really obvious where all the body parts start and end. And I now have a really good foundation for the final and longest part, stage five, the coloured pencils. Now coloured pencils are a very broad topic and the only way to really get good at them is to use them a lot. But let me explain some things that are particularly important when doing coloured pencil work on Lego minifigures. The first is that you need to have a sharp pencil as this will give you more control over where the pigment is actually going. Which is particularly important on Lego minifigure drawings as everything needs to be nice and clean and crisp. I also find that working with sharp pencils is just an all round better experience. Now the pencils I'm using are Faber-Castell Polychromos. Now they are an oil based pencil which means they're able to blend 
lines really smoothly, which is particularly important when drawing Lego minifigures, but all the surfaces need to be really smooth. And before you ask, I am not sponsored by Faber-Castell. But no matter what pencils you're using, you can still get some great results out of them using a process called layering. Now this is where I go into an area with a colored pencil and just amplify what's already there from the marker base. And you may notice that it looked quite grainy and washed out. However, when you go in with the second layer to pick up on more details, you'll notice that the two layers blend together and become a lot smoother. And as you add more and more layers, it will get smoother and smoother and more like actual Lego pieces. And picking up all the details in multiple layers means that you'll be less overwhelmed as you're not trying to get them all in one go. And the last tip that I would give you is to split the minifigure up into its basic parts, like an accessory, the head, the body, and the legs. And I would work accessory for a bit, then go to the head, then even start the body, then go do some work on the legs. Just really kind of mix it up so you keep everything nice and fresh, so you don't end up trying to rush to the finish just because you're bored. So as a summary for the colored pencil section, you need to keep a sharp pencil, use layering, and mix up the section that you're working on. So yeah, I hope that if you do want to try and draw a realistic Lego minifigure, you found at least a couple of things in this video helpful. And yeah, if you have, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button, and I'll hopefully see you soon with either a time-lapse or a video just like this one.